defining gross domestic product. What does GDP actually measure? The definition is that GDP is the market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given period of time. It is supposed to be a measure of the total value of production that takes place in an economy. By deconstructing this formal definition, we can get a good idea of what actually is being measured and why each of the elements of this definition are there. First, market value. The problem is that we are trying to add up the production of different kinds of goods and services. If you want to know what is the total amount of production that takes place, how do you add bananas to cars to education? And what is the unit to use in counting M&Ms, the bag or each candy? Well, if you're going to add up disparate and varying things, then you have to have some common unit of measurement. How about weight? We could add the weight of banana production to the weight of car production to the weight of hmm, works for bananas, works for cars. I'm not sure what is the weight of education. So that won't do it. Well, what the GDP statisticians do is they use the market value of each item of production and then they add the market values together. So that is why it says market value. Final goods and services. To explain the importance of final, let us think of a highly simplified economy with only three industries. There is a cattle industry, there is a food processing industry that produces beef, and there's a retail food sector that sells hamburgers to the public. And to keep it really simple, we're going to assume that producing cattle and maintaining cattle has no inputs. The cattle reproduce themselves and they graze on grass. Grass that grows wildly and freely. And in this particular year, the value of cattle that is produced is $20. The cattle is sold to the food processing industry to produce ground beef. And that sector produces $70 of ground beef. And the ground beef is bought by the retail food sector, by the restaurants, and they produce $100 worth of hamburgers. So if we added all of this, we would get $190 worth of production. But that's actually not representative of the true value of production because the $20 worth of cattle is already represented in the $70 of beef. In other words, the food processing industry has not produced $70 worth of output. They have taken $20 worth of value and used $20 worth of value to end up with $70 worth of output. Similarly, the restaurant sector has taken $70 worth of beef and created $100 of hamburgers. So they have not produced a whole hundred dollars of value. Since the value of cattle production is in the beef and the value of beef production is in the hamburgers, if we counted the total value of the 20 and the 70 and the 100, we would have a double counting problem. So one solution to this is to recognize that the producers of hamburgers have not created $100 of value, 
they've taken $70 of value to begin with and added $30 of value to end up with $100 of hamburgers. So the value of production that they have added to the process is only $30. Similarly, the food processing sector, having taken $20 of cattle and created $70 of beef, their value added is only $50. And since we assume that cattle production has no inputs, then the entire $20 is value added. So we don't count the total value of cattle output and beef output and hamburger output. We count only their value added. And the value added of all goods is $100. And that's a more accurate measure of production in this economy. But there's another way to get at this solution. Since the $20 of cattle is in the $70 worth of beef, and the $70 of beef is in the $100 of hamburgers, then in this highly simplified economy, we only need to count the hamburgers because the hamburgers, the value of the hamburgers represents the value of all of the other intermediate inputs. So an alternative to counting only the value added of each industry is to count the total value of final goods. Goods that are sold to their final consumers. And that's the reason for the final in the definition. But a note of caution here. Final is not in the nature of the product. It really is defined by if it goes to its final consumers. So to explain this further, let us complicate our, our example slightly and say that the cattle industry actually produces 40 pounds worth of cattle and the food processing industry produces $140 of beef, but only $70 of beef goes into hamburgers. The other $70 of beef is sold directly to consumers in supermarkets. Because it is sold to their final consumers, then this second pack of beef is a final product. Whatever is sold to final consumers is a final good or service. So final is not in the nature of the commodity, but only in whether it is used in producing another commodity or sold to its end user. Produced. GDP is not a measure of all economic activity. It's a measure of production. So if a house is constructed in a particular year and the value added of that house is $20 million, then that is counted in the GDP for that year. But if the following year, that house is sold to another person for $30 million, then that transaction is not counted in GDP because that house already exists. There is no new production taking place. So the value of the house ends up not being represented in GDP. If there are any new services involved in executing the sale, like lawyers have to get involved and real estate agents, then those are currently produced services. But the value of the house is not in GDP by, by, by virtue of the fact that it changes ownership. Within a country. The ambiguity here is that there are various relationships between ownership and production 
in any economy. The simplest case is locally owned domestic production. Another possibility though is foreign owned domestic production. And also locally owned foreign production. So which of these gets counted in this country's GDP? GDP tries to be a geographical measure of production. It wants to capture the production that takes place within the geographic confines of the country. So it is not interested in the value of production by citizens of that country. That's a different measure. It is interested in production that takes place within the country. And finally, in a given period of time, generally GDP is measured on the basis of a calendar year because GDP, the production of goods and services, is a flow variable. One has to specify whether you're talking about how much production took place in a month or in a quarter or in a year. And a year is the usual duration within which GDP figures are calculated. So that is what GDP is. It seeks to be a calculation, an estimation of the value of all production that takes place in a country during a certain period of time. But it's not that straightforward. As a practical matter, GDP does not and cannot reflect all final goods and services produced. It's actually not all. GDP, for example, cannot capture illegal activity. The data is accumulated, is gathered by means of surveys. So the surveyor is going to go to the illegal basement drug production and say, so tell me how much was the value of the illegal activity? That you, that you conducted last year. And this is somebody coming from the government. So illegal activities don't get counted. Also, only production that is commercial activity ends up getting counted. If you go to the market and buy some lettuce, that's in GDP. If you grow the same lettuce in your backyard, that is not counted in GDP. If you paint your own house, it's not counted in GDP. If you paint your neighbor's house because you're a painter and your neighbor, the lawyer, provides you with legal services because you are neighbors and you both do so, you know, on a friend basis, then those transactions are not in GDP. But if the same transactions are paid for, it ends up being counted in GDP. So as a practical matter, home production does not get counted in GDP. GDP is not all production, but it's really commercial production. And again, there is so much small informal activity that still represents the production of goods and services that there is no practical way to gather all of that information in any economy. So most street vending and informal personal services end up getting left out. Another problem is externalities. Externalities are a cost, negative externalities, are a cost of production that ends up not being monetized. It ends up being imposed on parties that are not parties to the actual transaction. It really should be counted as a cost of production and therefore be represented in GDP. It's not. So 
Negative externalities, environmental destruction, are not represented, are not deducted from GDP. And positive externalities, like the benefits of tree planting and what that does for the environment, that doesn't get counted in GDP. And finally, GDP is often used as a measure of welfare. And there are many non-economic factors that influence the level of welfare in a society. The state of public health, the level of crime. And none of those are reflected in GDP. Consider, for example, that the more crime there is, is the more production of and expenditure on security services. So more crime means GDP, at least insofar as security services are concerned, are going to go up. But that doesn't mean people are, are better off. It actually means that they are worse off. So GDP ends up not being a an accurate measure of production and certainly is not an accurate measure of the level of welfare in, in, a, in a country, in a society. But GDP is still used in that way and that is because despite its literal inaccuracy and its inability to capture the level of welfare and happiness that we would like to know about, it is most of the time correlated with what we want to know. And so it's sort of the best measure we have up to this point. So GDP is a measure of large scale commercial domestic production and serves as a proxy for standard of living.